Good morning, and welcome to the Bias Blood Ministries. We thank you for tuning in to this live taping. I am Minister Jill Harden, and this is Open House for Sunday. I hope your week was filled with joy and great prosperity, although we had some weather issues or some storms early in the week that looked that took a lot of a bunch of trees out and left 29 people dead across this country. And as we say, our condolences to all of you who may have lost a loved one or had someone affected by the storm. We are certainly praying for your family's healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like to take this time to thank uh, the young woman whom I met earlier this week, Miss Kathy Taylor and Miss Sharita Watkins, uh, for sharing their testimonies with me and for tuning in on this morning's broadcast. And we certainly urge our viewers to share this broadcast with your family, your friends, your loved ones, or whomever, um, and tell them how good God has been to you in this season, and he has given you a wonderful ministry to be able to bring to you to, to God's, uh, God's people. Each and every Sunday morning uh, at 7.45 a.m. and 6 p.m., each and every Sunday. And don't forget, my beloved, we are also doing a live taping on Saturday worship service at 7 p.m. each and every Saturday evening. And we certainly hope you all will watch us and begin to follow us and share all our pages with the people of God. You may also uh, find all of our shows on YouTube as well when you subscribe to uh, Gary Harden, that's G-A-R-R-Y Harden, H-A-R-D-E-N, and there you will find an abundance of shows and sermons and speeches uh, to really get out and get through the week and really through your seasons, amen? And don't forget that we can also be found on Blog Talk Radio Weekly on our webpage, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Holy Spirits. And the spirit is spelled with a Z as in zebra. And there you can follow us from that, from that very page. And also check out the hundreds of shows that will encourage, inspire, and enlighten you to begin to activate your spirit into rebuilding the kingdom. It all starts with the kingdom, my beloved. And as it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when it instructs us to so vividly to seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness, and after that, all things all things shall be added unto you. In other words, God is saying, I'll throw in a bonus, <laughs> like many of those slick commercials uh, ads do, always giving you a bonus, well, yet God's bonus is that everything your heart desires shall be yours. Uh, not, a, not a double purchase, but anything, anything, and all things shall be added unto you. That's really a disadvantage when you think about it, because God gives us Two instructions, to seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness. And then God says, after that, I'm going to give you everything. <laughs> Who in their right mind wouldn't want that deal which the world cannot give? Such an awesome God he is. Won't you agree? I want to send out a message of prayer today for all those who are in need of a word or who are sick and shut in on this morning. And again, we say a prayer for all those who were killed in the storms uh, in the South regions and to all those families affected by this untimely storm in this, in this past week. We also send out a prayers for those families who lost a loved one in the explosion uh, near Pensacola, Florida, uh, where it was said that uh, three inmates at a jail uh, were killed at that prison and 700 more inmates and staff were sent to the hospital. So we offer, our, we offer our deepest prayer this morning for those who were affected in the blast on this past week. We also send a prayer for those 234 young girls who went missing, now up to 280 girls, 300 girls in Nigeria, and who were sold off to a militia group to be brides, and they were sold for $12. We pray that this government and many other governments step in, step in and truly protect that region and those families. And we truly 
bless those babies, those little innocent girls who simply was attending school when these heinous crimes took place. We pray for all those missing teenagers who are still missing each week in the news that they will be found safe and soon will be back home with their loved ones. And we also send a prayer for the city of Chicago and all the murders. There were 46 murders over the Easter holiday weekend and just this past week, another 26 murders. 26 shots, I'm sorry, with six murders. So Father, we ask for your strength, for your favor and your guidance and with wisdom and understanding and bringing closure to all of those who are affected in any way, shape, or form. And we bless your holy name with all the praises and glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say amen. Amen. And a amen. Wonderful scripture coming out of Hebrews today. And it is so prevalent in today's society. So many of our leaders on national scale are busy making deals of one of a kind, of some kind or another, in hope of, hope of bringing peace and prosperity in their nations. Yet for many of these so-called leaders, too often it leads to chaos and corruption. Anytime you find any form of, form of confusion and a mess, normally it starts from the top, amen? So many companies are finding themselves also in the news, such as Walmart, with the hiring of part-time employees who, when getting the jobs, are hit with forms to fill out for government assistance, immediately doing the orientation. I'd never heard of such a thing until now, and all the farming giants, all the corporations who are trying to put more and more chemicals and GMOs in the foods, mainly in America, that American people are eating, which will take away an average lifespan of 10 years off of each person. And yet nobody, not even the U.S. Department of Agriculture, has said no to these major corporation giants. Again, whenever you find a pile of mess, a pile of debris, everywhere you turn, it usually starts from the top. Even in relationships and families, People are busy hiding their monies, their feelings, even hiding their mistresses. Yes, I tell you, the world is filled with hidden secrets that God knows and already has seen. So when you look at life in itself, and when we do a self-evaluation, you should ask yourself, as this scripture is titled, what are you hiding underneath the covers? What are you hiding underneath the smiles, the great family life of going to church, being a member on the auxiliary board, and being an employee of the month on your job? With all that going on, what is really going on underneath your veil? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 reads like this. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This scripture tells us clearly that God is a God of omniscience. God knows, sees all of our doings, no matter how clever we've been in hiding it from the world. No matter how many backdoor deals the President of the United States make, God has already seen the outcome of any hidden agenda. The world in itself is universally of God's knowledge. It is the one that despite how, cl how clear it is, man with all his money, his power, his technology, still thinks he can outwit God. Yet, <laughs> there is no creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things. All created things, no matter how high and low, great or small, visible to the eye or in invisible are comprehended in this word creature. Nothing is too great for God's comprehension. Nothing too small for his notice. Nothing too hidden from God's penetration. Look at Psalms chapter 1. It says it so plainly. 
It says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or sit in the company of mockers. Verse 2 says, But who delight is in the Lord, the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Verse 3 reads, That person is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yield its fruits in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whether they do prosper. Verse 4 says, Not so the wicked, they are like chaff, that the wind blows away. Verse 5 says, Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of righteous. And verse 6 reads, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. God sees all things as they are really as they really are. All things are naked unto his eye. He beholds them without any covering or disguise. Things and persons are cloaked, concealed, made to appear other than they are amongst men. But none of these things can impose upon him. He sees things thoroughly, completely, naked and open, laid open before the eyes. And in, in, in other words, when you when you see someone uh, of a stature and all their accolades and all the the iconic uh, um, achievements that they they've gotten through the world, but yet they are abusing their daughters, they're having sex with their daughters at six years of age and beating their wives and having sex with men. What this scripture is telling you when it says all things are naked and open unto, meaning just like in the Old Testament when you had to use a, a, a sacrificial lamb as a sacrifice and the priest would take that lamb, cut off his head, it would, it, it would open the lamb up exposing everything, laying it on his back, but ripping out the, the marrow, the bone. So everything was exposed and pulling out all of his organs to be visibly seen, to be unblemished. That's what God does. As man, as, as man run and lift everyone up, up high, oh yeah, this is, oh, uh, uh, the greatest man of all time, he was man of the year, and all these awards that, that are given to man and woman. God sees with an openness, a naked eye, laid upon the altar. God is witnessing everything that you cannot see. That's why you're seeing more and more people being exposed from, from, from priests to preachers to governors. All types of leaders are being exposed because God is laying them, laying them on the altar for the world to see. Because instead of us having our eye on God, we're so busy want, wanting to emulate and wanting our children to emulate somebody. My child will be the next LeBron James. My child will be the next Michael Jordan. My child will be the next Barack Obama. How about my child's going to be the God that God intended him to be? How about saying that for a change and allowing God to make that child of greatness and glory that the world can see and not just the media and the powerful and the, and the wicked and the wealthy to expose that child for money. So amazing how we take our constantly taking our eyes off God. But yet God sees things thoroughly, completely, all things naked, open unto God, laid open before the eyes. The word rendered mean open. This is simple. Simple people. Lying upon. Whatever may be the exact thing. God is a God who exposes all things. Look at Job chapter 31, verse 4, when it says, 
Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So also, Psalms 58, Psalms 56 verse 8 tells us also, reading from the Good News Translation, it says, You have kept a record of my wandering, my wanderings, and put my tears in your bottle. They are already in your book. When we, when we take a look at this, uh, at this verse closely, it tells us in Job uh, chapter 24, verse 23, it says, He may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. Mm. Even though this world is filled with so many corruption, lies, secrets, hidden agendas all, on all sides, even in personal relationships, my beloveds, men and women are busy hiding secrets from one another about their credit, how much money they make. Do they own their own homes or are they renting? So much dirt to throw on a pile of hidden secrets and, and through it all, God sees your intentions and he has already made judgment and has given you your sentence to man's evil ways of doing things that are simply not of God. My grandmother used to always tell me that you can run from God, but you cannot, you cannot hide. God knows your hiding places even before you figure them out. He's already there waiting to see if you will wake up and turn back to him. My, grand my grandmother would tell me that all the time. Never understood my grandmother back then, but because I was too busy focusing my mind on hidden agendas. That's how the devil deceives. By making whatever you're, you're trying to get to look so good, so irresistible, so promising, that you cannot hear anything or anybody telling you to watch out for that Mack truck heading your way. Let alone listen to God. We got to be mindful, people. So ever mindful. So what are the significance and the importance of God's knowledge to man? He is the God with whom we have to do, not unto whom we must render our account. That's a clause that expresses a more comprehensive relation than, than that. It expresses our whole concern and relation with God. The divine omniscience has very important practical bearings upon us. As an effectual rebuke to the pride which springs from knowledge or from intellectual attainments, compared with the knowledge of him with whom we have to do. What does the most intelligent man know? We are but of yesterday knowing nothing. Second Chronicles and chapter 7 verse 14 says, Again, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lands. So amazing that humility is one of the main focus dealing with Hidden agendas. Pride. Think we know everything. We're smarter than everybody else, but not unto him who knows all things. Scriptures even tell us, but we know, but yesterday we knew everything, but today we know nothing. Because nothing is hidden. Nothing is new. So amazing people always, you heard that new song, nothing is new, there's no new song, <laughs> there's no new video, it's already been done. So all your backsliding and, 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 and hoodwinking you think you're doing, it's already been done. That's why it's all a lie. Humility would be one of the first goals of trying to unveil your dark side of hidden agendas. Another one could be re repent, confess. As a check upon sins, whether it, it, it whether in thought or feeling or in word or actions. Repent, then in turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That's in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. 
Trust in God could be another. Humility, repenting, and confessing, but trusting in God can be another as encouragement to trust in Him. Look at Psalms chapter 146, verse 3, when it says, Do not put your trust in, in princes and human beings who cannot save. We're so busy trying to, Oh, I, he loves me. Oh, he, I, I trust him. Oh, I trust her. And scripture tells us in 146 Psalms, don't put your trust in man. But trust on all things that of God. Seek God could be another one. Seeking God's counsel. Stop being on, 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 on your cell phone and texting and whatever, trying to get counsel for your, for your dirt. So amazing people will be, will, be, will be the low down as creatures trying to get advice on how to be more dirty. So who they do? Their circle is, 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 is the circle of people that they're surrounded by are negative and filthy people. So they call a negative and filthy friend and find how to be more negative and more filthy. And what a shame that is. When all you can you have to do is seek God's counsel as a great consolation when, when misinterpreted or slandered. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Wonderful scripture. Psalms 37, chapter 37, that is in Psalms, verse 5 through 6 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will do it. Verse 6 says, He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as noonday. And as a great comfort and support in affliction and trial. And as a guarantee of the triumph of his cause, his plans were formed with a full knowledge of every possible obstacle or opposition. And they anticipate and provide for the ut utilization of such opposition for their own furtherance and realization. So amazing people. Psalms Chapter 78, verse 39 reads, Thus he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not return. In Psalms 103, chapter 13, verse 14 says, Just as a father has compassion on, on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Verse 14 says, He himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. We're so honored to be in the body of Christ. But when we're talking about doing the right thing, hitting agendas, your integrity and your character must be in the forefront of everything that you do. Christ must be the center. But as, but as a child of God and a spiritual being I'm not talking religion you must walk in excellence honor and glory because you are an ambassador to Christ my people so many things in this world that's going on even I saw this thing the other night uh, dealing with Nike and, and the sweatshops that they run over there in, in, in uh, Indonesia and here this owner Phil Nike uh, is making billions of dollars while in Indonesia the, the actual people who are making these shoes make a dollar and 25 cents a day. And they work 15 hours or longer a day because all they can get is a dollar and 25 cents a day. And some days they go without food because they have to choose to buy soap or food for their children or nothing at $1.25 a day. And yet all the athletes, LeBron James and Tiger Woods and, and Michael Jordan, all these uh, great players who are making millions of dollars, LeBron James and Michael Jordan alone, well, all three of them made well over $100 million in profit being associated with Nike. And yet all of them 
LeBron, the Tiger Woods, and Jordan, and all the other athletes. Clearly, they've seen and they know the hardship that goes on in Indonesia. And if the if the if the uh, the workers decide to stand out, they are either murdered or thrown out or beaten or jailed. And not one of these athletes are contesting the inhumane treatment of these people. That's your integrity, my beloveds. It's about integrity. Yeah, you, you make it $100 million uh, doing these commercials. But where's your character? Where's your integrity? And your hidden gender is laid out on the altar. It's about money, not about the people of God. Because we're all created by one God, whether in New York City or Indonesia. And we're all our brother's keepers. And yet he is a perfect example of men making hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet not one will stand for their own brother. Because the hidden agenda is money. And God will expose them eventually and open them up to what really is underneath all the accolades and all the fame and all the autographs they're signing and, and saying, oh, I want to thank my fans and all those things that they think that they're doing nothing wrong. And here we are as, as citizens buying these shoes, buying Nike products. Just do it. When I see that just do it, what, 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 to me it means it's telling the workers just do it. It should add on there or be killed. And despite all this, if we really cared about our brothers and sisters, I don't own anything that, that's Nike. Never have. Never bought a Nike nothing. That is my stance on the inhumane treatment of God's people. What is yours? What is your character? What is your integrity? Why are you wearing all, all, all the Nike? Because uh, as a friend told me, just this past Saturday, he said he was up all night because a new... I, I knew Jordan, Michael Jordan's shoe came out. I'm assuming I don't I don't follow it on Saturday. So he said he didn't had been asleep since since Friday morning when he woke up. Because he left his other job and went and bought a pair of shoes that were $180, Michael Jordan. And as again, as a people of God, we have the power to cease that. Allow your God, the God in you, to illuminate. And have a stance for the things of God by using your integrity, your character, and not trying to look have a hit agenda of looking like, oh, I'm I got on I got on my Jordans, I got on my LeBron James, I'm I'm looking good. What is your hidden agenda? Who who are you trying to impress? I want you to think about that today. I just gave you one analogy, but there's so many. Hidden agenda. There's so many prideful things that are going on. And they're going to be exposed in the kingdom in the next coming years. So many leaders of uh, who, uh, whom uh, many people have put on a, 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 a pedestal are going to go crumbling down. Because God is going to tear down that wall in order to restore his kingdom. We thank you for watching this live broadcast and we hope that you share this ministry with your friends, families, and co-workers and loved ones. And we are a new ministry and we are seeking to obtain a building in Alpharetta, Georgia, just inside of Georgia 400. So we are asking for your view, our viewers to sow into this ministry or donate a generous monetary gift in the business of building the kingdom of God. And you may do so by going to our website at www.holyspiritradio.org. Holy Spirit is spelled with a Z. And there you can click, click on the gift from the heart page and give a wonderful donation of your liking. And also, you know, of someone who would like to be a sponsor of this ministry, uh, you can go to that same web page and go to our contact page. And we will surely contact you within 24 hours. And again, that site is www.holyspiritsradio.org. The key word is Holy Spirit spelled with a Z. And as you go into this day, we ask the Lord to be with you and you on your journey. 
And we pray that each day is a day of new beginnings and that the Holy Spirit guides you along your journey into this world, creating a greater light that shines from within. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you soon. Peace. And stay free.